What role does yoga therapy play as a component of lifestyle medicine? I think yoga therapy is part of a fundamental cultural change in our society uh, in relation to health. Um, it's a big change from where we are right now. Um, as a baseline, humans need quality nutrition, clean water, shelter, community, exercise, access to nature, uh, space and silence. Um, and all of these form part of a healthy human being. The yoga therapy community is going to continue to develop partnerships with, med with the medical community over time. And the medical profession is going to begin to understand more about what yoga therapy can provide. But I do want to stress that that what we're looking at here goes beyond process. Our world and our earth is a conscious living mystery. Our birth, our death, our health and our being in the moment, these are all doorways for self-exploration and empowerment. And um, the world is not an unsolved problem for doctors, scientists and sociologists to study um, in a partitioned way. We, we want to look at wholeness and yoga therapy is one of the ways that we can really look at the whole human being. Our health involves many, many different aspects. In classical yoga, they talk about the koshas or these layers of the body. And so that's our starting point in yoga therapy is that we're looking at the different layers of the individual and how they interact. How does the yoga therapy community address the complex array of illnesses? The yoga therapy community is developing protocols for many of today's illnesses and conditions. Uh, Mr. Anger, one of the people that brought yoga to the West, was instrumental in this process during his life and his work is being continued by the profession. The International Association of Yoga Therapy, the yoga therapy's professional body, is doing a great job in supporting this process and it's supporting communication between the yoga therapy world and the world of conventional medicine. While I'm not focusing on this particular aspect at this time, I respect the people doing this work and I feel that the people developing these protocols are providing a great service. Uh, I've tended to focus my practice and research on the key principles that underpin a yoga therapy practice which go across illness processes and the need for total integrated change in every person that I work with. Yoga therapy is increasingly being used to support those who have been incarcerated. Can you talk about this? I don't have a direct experience of this. A number of my colleagues have worked in those environments in Europe. Their experiences seem to suggest that yoga can be supportive in the rehabilitation process and wholeness in the approach is very important. Focusing on mental aspects as well as physical aspects, on supportive language and philosophy that keeps uh, those in those environments with a positive focus. And I think that this can really create a shift in the mental and spiritual landscape of those people and change their lives. What role can yoga therapy play in the pregnancy process? I think it can play a very important role in pregnancy. I was fortunate to have teachers and community that were experts and innovators in utilizing yoga for pregnancy. Uh, my teachers John Sturk and Gary Carter really helped me understand the physiological aspect of the process and John Sturk's wife Lolly Sturk is a huge inspiration in this regard as she was one of the founders of the active birth movement in London which utilized intelligent yoga practices as part of a healthy pregnancy process. Ultimately we want to work with great care and attention and this is the approach developed by Vanda Scaravelli, the yoga that I do as taught to me by her longest student Diane Long. Ultimately every mother is different, lifestyle changes may be required and we need to be able to manage pain as it arises. Sometimes mothers-to-be have an established practice or sometimes they're a beginner, it really depends. I've seen mothers-to-be do full back bends a month before giving birth. Ultimately, birth is an extraordinary mysterious process, but there are some best practice principles that we can utilize to support the health of the mother and the baby. And I've always really enjoyed supporting female students with customized yoga therapeutics as they move through this very special time. How does yoga therapy help those with chronic conditions? First of all, I think this is a huge subject and links to the specific protocols for disease processes and chronic conditions that are being developed and refined within the yoga therapy community. Chronic conditions are dynamic processes and unique to the individual. And they require a very careful assessment over, the t over time as the client's symptoms change. 
As yoga therapists, we do not diagnose, so we work with the medical community and we support their guidelines. Many new complex disease processes are becoming widespread in our current global culture, and yoga can be a transformational practice. Sometimes an individual's change can be rapid, but more often than not, clients need patience for changes to take hold. Self-care knowledge relating to chronic conditions and how aging affects healing is lacking generally amongst medical practitioners. And many doctors are turning towards alternative healing approaches as a way to support their patients in the absence of better information. In relation to chronic pain, much can be done to shift the condition. I discuss chronic pain in my book and I bring to the reader's attention that it's a subjective process. Uh, some of the principles I've used in my own work to address chronic pain with, the, with my clients include the ideas of spatial medicine, the joint network, and the overall fluid movement and health of the body. And there's such a variety of chronic conditions and variance in how they present, as well as a whole variety of different underlying circumstances affecting things. So I think that we have to be very attentive as yoga therapists, working with our counterparts in the medical profession, and look to see what are the specific features of this client's chronic disease process and what aspects would need to be considered in order for those to be addressed. How can yoga therapy support those with anxiety? I think anxiety is one of the biggest challenges of our time and I believe the therapeutic power of yoga has a lot to offer. There's a myriad of reasons around why people experience anxiety. Some of them are trauma related, but many of them relate to our lifestyle, use of technology, endless rushing, the absence of nature, and the tendency to overwork. All of these affect both the nervous system and the viscera. And some of the ways that we can support those with anxiety is by working with the breath, training the body-mind, working with the emotions, changing our pace, and practicing in nature. The foundational work of letting go of past events, both physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, a key part of yoga's therapeutic process. And each client has their own journey with this. I work with this a lot in my classes. The work of surrendering into the moment, which forms the basis of all meditative practices, is one of the main things that yoga therapy clients are confronted with as we work together. This presents a major challenge for most people, but if they can get through this, they'll begin to see their whole system can begin to settle and that anxiety can begin to unwind itself. Another key element of my practice is working outside. Nature really supports the reduction in anxiety. And the more that one works in nature over time, the greater the impact. Creating time off in our normal schedules is essential for health. And the culture needs to get a lot better at this. Anxiety can arise from either one-off events, but it can also be cumulative from overworking. So to summarize, I work with people in their yoga therapy practice uh, and I tailor it to reduce the tone of the nervous system. And as we do this, it affects all of the systems of the body which help to build energetic resources. And one of the, one of the people that brought yoga to the West, Yogi Bhajan, taught that one of the main roles of yoga is to support people in developing a robust nervous system. And that's what we're really doing here. Do yoga teachers need training in related fields? Is there a need for yoga accreditation in higher education? I think the study of the human being in health is a vast interdisciplinary subject. And I think cross training in other disciplines can be extremely helpful if that training has depth. For mainstream education, we can look at psychology, we can look at medicine, we can look at physical therapy, chiropractic and osteopathic educations, and each one of those has something to offer. Yoga may not be the answer for every situation and we need to understand where the limitations of our work are. Body work skills can en enhance the yoga therapist practitioner's toolbox and I really believe that extensive meditation practice is absolutely foundational for a yoga therapist to deepen their awareness. I believe other psychological and spiritual trainings can also help to deepen the work of the yoga therapist and I think we really want to orient towards working with people and not bodies. And we're going beyond what mainstream medicine believes is important for health. I think the question of yoga therapy and higher education is a challenging one. There is a need for quality in the yoga therapy process. 
and in many ways that depends on the commitment of the individual practitioners. Too much structure can limit the diversity of yoga approaches because there are so many different kinds and each has value. I think that sometimes the courses in higher education can tend to be a little bit too structured, but it remains to be seen how these courses affect the yoga therapy landscape. An old adage in yoga is that basic training is 40 years. When I first heard this, I kind of scoffed at it, but after 20 years of practice, I'm beginning to really see the truth of it. I certainly think we need to move away from these short yoga courses that truncate the process of physical and perceptual development and give practitioners a false sense of competency. I think it takes time and we can't get away from that. Finally, what role does touch play in yoga therapy? I think the importance of touch in supporting the depth of the client's practice can't be overstated. I think the role of touch is that it supports integration, supports perception, and it supports awakening. The yoga therapist uses touch in a positive way and we use appropriate hands-on adjustments to build an environment of consent in a yoga setting. In general, we are a touch neglected culture, so touch can be very powerful for people and may bring up some trauma. So it's important that we have proper training, we have consent and that we have mindfulness in our touch. The theory in regards to yoga adjustments, as with the verbal cues, is that we're supporting the clients in the perception of a principle. We're not trying to fix people or make some sort of externally perfect posture. We're looking to build a deeper understanding of the ground, of our breath, of the fluid rhythms of the body. And I talk extensively about helping clients find an improved relationship with these principles in my book, Principles and Themes of Yoga Therapy. In my own journey, cranial sacral therapy has played a key role um, I've been working with cranial sacral therapy for 15 years and this has greatly informed how and why I touch.